small SUVs. If you're looking for a sensible family car with just a little bit more style, they might be just the perfect choice for you. But which did you choose between the new Peugeot 3008, the Toyota CHR, and the Seat Ateca? Now these three are seen as the supporting actors of the unfolding small SUV drama, but they're actually good enough to steal the limelight. To help you decide which of these is the star of the show, I'm going to critique their designs. It's quirky, but in a cool way. Inspect their cabins. I mean, the interior of this thing is, well, it's like a premium car. In fact, it's better. See how practical they are. It's almost like you're in a prison cell peering out. <laughs> and test what they like to drive. It can be a lot of fun to drive down a twisty road. But let's start with the sensible stuff. Right, are you ready to concentrate? Because I'm about to throw a load of numbers at you. So this SATA Tecker starts from £18,000. This is a one litre SE and it's £22,500, but that's because it's got three grand's worth of options on it. Now this Toyota CHR is the XL version. It's got a 1.2 litre petrol engine in it and it costs £26,000, but this one does have two grand's worth of options on it. And finally, we come to the Peugeot 3008. This is the GT line model, which is quite high up the range and it's got a 1.2 litre turbo petrol engine. And this one here costs £32,000, but that's because it's got £5,000 worth of options on it. But what really matters is the price you pay at a dealer. And if you click up there to go to carwow.co.uk, you can pair offers and buy at a price you're confident in. So the Peugeot 3008 is the most expensive car here, but it looks it. People bought the previous Peugeot 3008, despite its looks. People will buy this new one, because of its looks. In fact, since I've had this car on test, a few people who don't know that much about cars actually, have come up to me and said, is that the new Range Rover Evoque? And that's kind of high praise. Whether you get the Range Rover vibes or not, the 3008 certainly stands out compared to the average small SUV. Speaking of which, let's talk about the Seat Ateca. The Spanish are supposed to be famous for their quirky designs. I mean, you think about Barcelona, however this, it kind of makes me want to take a siesta. Unlike the Seat, I doubt anyone will ever criticise the CHR for being dull. Toyota has been creating some pretty quirky looking cars of late. For instance, the Prius is quirky, but in a weird way. A bit like Steve Buscemi, whereas the CHR is more like Benedict Cumberbatch. It's quirky, but in a cool way. Toyota brings that funky styling from the outside to the inside too. Only here, it's not quite so successful. Now the inside of the CHR is classic Toyota interior in the way that some of it's good and some of it's bad. So I particularly like the multi-surfacing here on the dash and the feel of the materials. This race centre console and the stubby gear lever feels very sporty and these seats, they're just super blooming comfy. But then it's let down by things like this stupid digital clock, this flimsy bit of trim and the fact you've got this old fashioned like LCD TV bonked on the dash. If the screen looks LCD, its graphics are more like CRT. It all looks so dated with inconsistent font sizes, messy layouts and garish colours. Physical buttons are easier. The Ateca's infotainment system is miles better to use. Big physical shortcut buttons make it easy to find your way around. And the smart graphics and bold icons for menus and DAB digital radio stations make it look nice to look at. It's all very sensible, just like the rest of the cabin. Seat is owned by Volkswagen and you can kind of get the sense of the Germans overseeing attention to detail in this car. So everything's nicely laid out, it's dead easy to use, feels quite well built as well. The only thing is that it's, well, it's a touch unexciting. While the Seat's interior design is a little bit of a letdown, you can't say the same about the 3008. It really does stand out. Most mainstream car manufacturers are always banging on about taking their cars up market, but Peugeot really have genuinely gone and done that with this 3008. I mean, the interior of this thing is, well, it's like a premium car. In fact, it's better and a standard right. All cars right across the range, not only get a screen of this size in the center, but also a digital driver's display, which is glorious. Those dials can be customised to show all the information you need. It's not quite as pretty, nor as clever as Audi's virtual cockpit, but it's not far off, and of course, it's standard. The main infotainment screen is easy to work with, thanks to some toggle switches for menu shortcuts, but in other places, the system is a little bit frustrating. The screen isn't very responsive to touches, and loading times are slow. It looks nice, but the Seat system is the easier to use every day. So what's the Peugeot like for passengers? 
it's pretty comfy here in the back of the 3008 and it's nice and spacious as well but there are a few things to note the first is that if you go for this panoramic sunroof it does eat into headspace so people over six foot might find it a bit of a squeeze also you're going to want to ask the people in the front to jack their chairs up a bit so you could slot your feet underneath but other than that i mean you've got a flat floor so it's actually all right with three in the back another thing that's a bit of an issue maybe is the fact that this seat is quite low so yeah you've got quite an angle there between your legs and your knees and finally there's this look yeah, it doesn't go all the way down. Ah, I hate it when that happens. So the windows don't go down as far as they should, and the doors they're attached to don't open as wide as they could. This is a bit of a problem when fitting a child seat, but at least the isofix points are quite easy to get to. The Ateca's doors open much wider though, so even a bulky child seat is a cinch to fit. It's still a great place to sit, even if you're old enough to dress yourself too. It feels nice and spacious here in the back of the Ateca, and part of the reason for that are these huge rear windows. And the good news is, they actually wind pretty much all the way down, which is handy. And yeah, there's lots of space back here. The problem is the hump in the floor down there if you need to carry three. That hump is pretty much the only criticism when it comes to passenger space though, because otherwise it's really bright and airy in the back. The CHR is the smallest car here on the outside, and that becomes obvious as soon as you sit in the second row. This car feels the smallest in the back. It doesn't really help that you've got tiny rear windows. So it's almost like you're in a prison cell peering out. <laughs> And yeah, for me, headroom's okay, but taller people might struggle. And then there's the footwells, the seat runners for the, the front seat, just, well, they're getting in the way of your feet. The small doors don't make fitting a baby seat that easy either, because they don't open very wide. You'll also need to pack lighter than you would in the other two, because there's not much space out back. The CHR's boot is actually about the same size as you'd find on a normal small family hatchback, not a SUV crossover thingy. So yeah, it's about a quarter smaller than the other two cars in this test. And really, it's kind of devoid of clever features as well. Load it up and it becomes clear just how much space it misses compared to the other two. In five seat mode, there's space for a couple of small suitcases and one large one. When you fold the seat, you're left with a big hump in the floor, which makes items like TV boxes hard to slide to the front. Fully loaded, it will hold a TV box, two large boxes, two medium, two small and a small suitcase and a couple of soft bags. It's got quite a narrow opening and a big load lip too. Two things that a Teka bars won't need to worry about. One of the things that I like about the Seat's boot is that the load height is actually lower than the other two, so it's not too difficult to lift heavy items into the car. Plus with this false floor, you can raise it up pretty quickly. Ta-da! Seats up or down, the Seat holds much more than the Toyota. The taller boot space means there's room for four suitcases with the chairs in place. The back row can be folded away by little levers in the boot, which is very handy. And once they're out of the way, there's a flat low bay that'll hold all the stuff the Toyota can, plus another large suitcase with room to spare for more. So, how does the Peugeot compare? This boot is really big, it's practical, it's got plenty of features. It's, it's really, really nice actually, and you can upgrade it with things like an electric tailgate, which you can operate sometimes if you kick underneath there. You have to get your kicking technique just right, otherwise it doesn't recognise it. So the foot waggle might make you look a bit silly, but the amount the 3008's boot can take is definitely sensible. The load space is wide and flat, and with the seats up, it holds about the same amount of stuff as a Seat. However, the Peugeot's party piece is a folding front seat, which is standard on all but the most basic level of trim. Fold that away, drop the back seats via a couple of levers, and the 3008 can hold a TV box, two large boxes, two medium boxes, two small boxes, four suitcases, a baby buggy, and a couple of soft bags, plus a set of golf clubs. Oof, saying all that has left me pretty breathless, but is the 3008 hard work from behind the wheel? So this Peugeot feels very distinctive to drive, and that's all due to this kind of small steering wheel and this eye cockpit. It feels substantial as well, so it's quite a comfy car, but it feels like it's got a bit of weight to it, and I don't mean that in a bad way, I mean it in a good way. It feels like a chunky, secure SUV. Now, you can't get it with all-wheel drive, not any model at all, but really, people aren't going to go off-road in this kind of car. And if you think you might do, you can get something called grip control, which is basically a clever version of electronic stability control. It just improves the traction in slippery conditions, and that's going to be good enough for most people. And on the whole, yes, I think this is quite a nice, relaxing car to drive.
good one for families. This particular 3008 is powered by a 1.2 litre petrol engine. It may sound small for a car of this size, but a turbocharger gives it plenty of poke. It's meant to manage 55 miles per gallon, and I got 41, which isn't too bad. Overall, the 1.2 litre petrol is probably the best option in the range. Unless you need to do lots of miles, then go for one of the diesels, which are also good. So, the 3008 is pretty impressive, but the Seat really starts to impress from behind the wheel. So it's pretty clear that Seat wanted this Ateca to have a sporty edge to it, and you really do notice that. The steering is nice and sharp, it responds very quickly, it doesn't roll much at all in the corners of this thing. And if you want the SUV that's best for going down a back road, whizzing through corners, out of the three, this is the one to go for. The downside is, is that the suspension is maybe a bit too firm for some people, and you do notice that in town over potholes and things like that. Now, the car I'm driving here has the one litre three-cylinder turbocharged engine, and it's, it's punchy enough. It's not too bad. I'm getting 45 miles per gallon, which is quite good. However, if I was going to buy this car, I'd get the 1.4 turbo petrol, because that engine is lovely. It's smoother than this. This one's a little bit gruff. The rest of the experience, bit of tie roar, bit of wind whistle, but it's not too bad. And on the whole, it's, it's quite a nice car to be in. It just kind of doesn't feel as special, maybe or as SUV-like as the Peugeot. It doesn't have that solid feeling that the Peugeot has. So, the Ateca feels sporty by small SUV standards, but the Toyota might just edge it for fun. Now, the big difference when you jump into this CHR compared to the other two cars is that it doesn't feel quite so much like an SUV because you're sitting noticeably lower, so you don't get that, that view over traffic like you do with the Peugeot or the Seat. Also, I must point out the visibility at the back corner is really bad because of those thick pillars but yeah on the whole it's quite nice to drive it feels pretty lively and agile yet it's comfortable too the seats are lovely i love the seats if there is one problem though it's the noise you get so it's, it gets quite a bit of tire roar it gets quite a bit of wind noise and that can get on your nerves after a while i can't it's what also can get on your nerves is the late departure warning going off the whole time what is good though is the 1.2 litre turbo petrol in this car. It's nice and smooth, it's fairly punchy, and it works well with this fairly snickety manual gearbox. With this combination, the CHR managed 41 miles per gallon, which isn't far off Toyota's 47 miles per gallon claim. If you do lots of town driving, there's also a hybrid version that has the potential to save you even more money on fuel. So, where does all that leave us? Well, the Toyota CHR, you know, it looks cool, it drives nice, it could just do with being a bit bigger, like the Seat Ateca, which is a great all-rounder, it's just, it's just not that exciting, and that's where the Peugeot 3008 comes in. You know, it's practical, it drives nice, it looks fantastic inside and out, it's just more desirable than the other two, and that matters with these kind of cars, and that's why it wins this test. Please like, share and comment on this video and click on our logo to subscribe for more or click on the windows to watch the detailed reviews of each of the cars in this test.